Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on Switch. This time I'm going to show you how to start and complete the entire trading sequence of this game. This trading sequence is borderline mandatory in order to beat the game. Uh, a lot of steps are actually mandatory to enter certain dungeons, but completing it is mandatory to figure out the path you need to take in the Windfish dungeon. Now, be aware that the path that you will see at the end of this video will not be your path. It is always random, so you have to do this trading sequence. Step one is to go to the trendy game and get the Yoshi doll off the counter. This is a little bit trickier than in the original because the Yoshi doll has physics of its own, and as you see it rattling there in the claw, it can slip out. So make sure you come here with 30 or 40 rupees so you can give it a few tries. But once you get it off the table, you can go ahead and claim it, and then when you leave here, the boys outside will tell you that their mom has been dying to get one, so you should go to the quadruplet's house and give it to the mother. In exchange for the Yoshi doll, she will give you the ribbon. And if you've been speaking with Bow Wow or Madam Meow Meow or even Chow Chow, uh, you will find that Chow Chow loves accessories. So go ahead and bring this to Chow Chow. She's in the little dog house off to the side. Speak with Chow Chow, and in exchange for the ribbon, she will give you the dog food. Now, you would think that you would give this to a dog, but no, you're going to give this to an alligator. And that is Sale down at Sale's House of Bananas on the beach. So, enter Sale's House of Bananas. I always thought his name was Sal and was mistranslated, but according to this game, as well as the art book that came with it, his name is indeed Sale. In exchange for the dog food, Sale will give you some of his bananas, which you will then need to access Canalet Castle. So this is one of those steps that's just mandatory to progress through the game. So after uh, Sale scarfs down the entire tin of dog food, he'll give you a bunch of bananas. And then just keep questing along and eventually you will run into Kiki the monkey just outside Canalet Castle. Giving Kiki the bananas will cause him to uh, call his monkey friends and they will build a bridge to Canalet Castle for you. Once they are done building that bridge, they will leave behind a stick. And that's what this is right here. Now, you may be wondering, who in the world should I give a stick to? Well, after you uh, finish Canalet Castle and the Key Cavern, uh, you will find Taran over here, uh, right near the Cuckoo Prairie Warp Point. He is at a, at a tree with a honeycomb on it, so go ahead and give him the stick, and you'll get the honeycomb in exchange. With this in your inventory, head down to Animal Village and speak with Chef Bear in the uh, southeast corner of the village, and he will ask you for the honeycomb because he just ran out of it for his soups. Looks like he's making Manhattan clam chowder and corn chowder, I'm guessing. And he'll give you a pineapple in exchange. Then head up to Tao Tao Mountain Range and give Papple the pineapple. He will eat it in two seconds and he will rip it in half. So he's got to be brolic even though he's starving and needs vitamins. But in exchange for the pineapple, he will give you the hibiscus, which you need to bring back to Animal Village and give it to Christine. She's in the second to last house in the northeast corner. After you give Christina hibiscus, she will ask you to deliver a letter for her to Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright lives in the mysterious forest, or just outside the mysterious forest, in the northwest corner. You will need the rock's feather at this point to access him. So from the chest where you get the tail key, just head to the northwest corner and then uh, proceed into this house. And giving Mr. Wright the letter, uh, he will thank you so much for it, and then he will give you a broom, and you need to then bring this broom to Grandma Yahoo in Mave Village. She's just outside of Oriva's house. I'm assuming this is Oriva's wife, maybe. In exchange for the broom, she will give you the fishing hook, and now it is time to head down to Martha's Bay. There is a fisherman underneath a bridge in Martha's Bay, and showing you from the Catfish's Maw Dungeon where to go. You just wanna swim uh, to the east and then south, and then just swim under this bridge. You don't need to dive, simply just walking or swimming towards the bridge will do the trick. And then at surface level, make your way towards the boat. It may take you a few tries, but just keep moving towards the boat and uh, you'll eventually automatically jump up there. And then uh, you can speak with the fisherman and he will fish up the necklace for you. This belongs to the mermaid just outside Catfish's Maw. Interesting note, in the original Japanese version of this game on Game Boy back in the early 90s, this was a bra. And that is why the mermaid is like so embarrassed and I'm just surprised they kept even that in. I'm surprised they didn't just redo this whole little necklace situation. Um, that's why she's ashamed and is like only has her head above water. 
but in exchange for the necklace, she will give you a scale, and you need to bring this to the mermaid statue that is also in Martha's Bay. So right near here, just exit the water, and this is right near Animal Village, but you want to keep going south, just bypass the village, go all the way south, and you will need the hook shot for this. So once you are at the end, hook shot onto this box over here, zip on over, kill this enemy, and then walk up to this statue, press A, and place the scale. And this is the final part of the trading sequence. The, the final item is in here, and this item will always be in your inventory. You do not need to give it to anybody else. But walk downstairs to this underground cavern, run all the way up, and claim the magnifying lens for yourself. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, the path that you are given in the book in the library is completely random. So even if you create additional save files, and do this trading sequence on those save files, those solutions will be different. So the solution you see here on your screen will not be your solution. This is only my solution. It changes every single time you start a new file. In addition to now being able to decipher this text, you can also see two NPCs that were previously invisible to you. The first of which is a Zora in Animal Village located in the house in the northeast corner. Speaking with this Zora, will allow you to receive a secret seashell in exchange for keeping his secret. He doesn't want anybody knowing that he's hanging out in this house. It will also tell you to check out a cave down in Tonboro Shores to visit another person just like him, somebody who was invisible until you got the magnifying lens. Head down to Tonboro Shores and bomb open this cracked wall in the cliff face. Inside, you will find a vendor named Gordia. Goria will trade you for a weapon that is on your X or Y button. Be aware that you cannot trade him magic powder, bombs, or the bow due to them having consumables. So it's best to trade him the shovel because you definitely want to keep the hook shot. Trading him an item will grant you the boomerang, and if you'd like your shovel back, just exit the cave, go back in, and he will sell it back to you for 300 rupees. What's hilarious is that in the original versions of this game, both in the original and in Link's Awakening DX, he would just allow you to trade back and forth for this item. That's likely due to inventory limit concerns, uh, but it's just hilarious that now you're going to give him 300 rupees for something you bought for 200 rupees way earlier in the game. I do want to give a special shout out to YouTube user Chase1 for pointing out in the comments on my Eagle's Tower Guide that you can buy back your weapon from Goria for 300 rupees. I had no idea that this was possible, and that's why I never actually used the boomerang in my last few dungeon walkthroughs. So. Thank you again, Chase1. But that's it. That's the whole trading sequence. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on Nintendo Switch, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new videos go live. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at SJCage. And you can also find me on twitch.tv slash sweetjohnnycage, where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday night, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. That about does it. I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.